Joining me now, Molly Jong Fast, editor at large for the Daily Beast, and Michael Steele, senior advisor for the Lincoln Project and a former RNC chairman. Welcome to you both. There's a lot to get into here. As we start with this statement, guys, uh, it's from McConnell, and it is really an about face from his stance in 2016. That is when he argued that the Senate should not, and in fact would not, hold a hearing on President Obama's election year nominee, Merrick Garland. And here is what Senate Judiciary Chair Lindsey Graham had to say about a potential Supreme Court vacancy. This was back in 2016 and then again repeated in 2018. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president who it whoever it might be, make that nomination, and you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. And I'll tell you this, if an opening comes in the last year of President Trump's term and the primary process has started, we'll wait to the next election. Okay, he's on record there. We're going to get you guys on record uh, today as we had Senator Graham tweeting a response to the president's tweet saying now that he fully understands where he's coming from. Molly, I know that you covered Merrick Garland's nomination as well as those of uh, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation. So how quickly are Senate Republicans reversing their positions on this? And can Lindsey Graham be held accountable, as he said multiple times, to what he said in 2016 and 2018? Well, it's amazing how fast these Republicans are reversing their positions. I mean, Merrick Garland was nominated 237 days before the election, and they wouldn't even look at him. Even before he was nominated, um, McConnell went to the floor and said that whoever it was would not get a hearing. And now we have, we're 45 days from the election, people are already voting. And we have Republicans are, are pushing. And even in this statement, the statement for, you know, he says we're going to look at Trump's nominee. So it's a radical about face. Yeah, radical indeed. Michael, we have the president, of course, piling onto this, saying that he wants to, he's made it clear, rather, that he wants to see the Republicans fill this seat without delay. Do you think Republicans will pay a political price for this reversal? We're talking about vulnerable Republicans like uh, Senator Graham, uh, Susan Collins, Cory Gardner. I mean, the hypocrisy of these statements and where we are today, will that be lost on voters? Or are they going to say, wait a minute, not so fast? Well, that, I think that remains to be seen, how, how folks digest all of this, how they, how they want to hold these individual members accountable. Remember, Access Hollywood take came out right before the election, and, and voters went, okay, thank you for sharing, and they elected Donald Trump. Uh, so here you are now uh, with the expectation that voters are going to somehow hold um, Senate Republicans accountable, we will see. Uh, but I think you need to fundamentally understand this is not about hypocrisy. That was then, this is now. That's how Republicans look at these situations. This is all a political uh, process for them that they get to either control or be a victim of. And they find a way to be in control. So the words and the statements at the time, I guarantee you, Lindsey Graham is going to line up exactly where Donald Trump wants him to line up. Now, the accountability will be in his race in South Carolina to hold his seat. And South Carolinians will decide whether Jamie Harrison mm -hmm. is a better honest mm -hmm. broker on their behalf than Lindsey Graham. So that's a risk that Lindsey Graham's going to take. But for McConnell and the president, this is about getting a 7-3 or uh, getting to a 7-2 Supreme uh, conservative Supreme Court at some point, yeah. whether it is in this term or the next. I have to say, I spoke with Jamie Harrison. It's been uh, almost two hours now since we had a really interesting conversation and the issue of integrity and what all that means came up, certainly, Molly. Do you find it possible that enough Republicans would show a, a integral spine, if you will, and be against the idea of appointing a justice in an election year uh, and, and go to forth to block a potential Senate vote? Is that possible? It seems very unlikely. I would think the only senator you could look to for that would be Mitch, uh, would be, I'm sorry, Mitt Romney, because he's been able to do that before and he has sort of, you know, he sort of, he has this, rela this sort of relationship with his state that uh, is bigger than his party. But I don't think you can look to any of the other ones. But what's interesting is Democrats really could use this to their advantage. I mean, this is an argument about choice. This is going to come down to abortion. And 
77% of Americans believe in some kind of abortion, legalized abortion, which means this is a losing argument for Mitch McConnell. And I think you really could see, I mean, this is the worst thing that could happen to Cory Gardner and Susan Collins. Yeah. And in terms of that 70%, some form of uh, abortion legalization, but uh, the, the majority of them, vast majority, with some sort of caveats, certainly to all of that. Michael, uh, this call with the Senate Democrats in just this last hour, it began about an hour and a half ago, we're learning that Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said, quote, if Senate Republicans move forward with this, then nothing is off the table for next year, nothing is off the table. What does that mean? How do you interpret that? What does that mean for Republicans, Michael? It is the culmination of what began under Majority Leader Harry Reid uh, when he made the fateful decision uh, to change the number uh, of senators required uh, for uh, appointments, uh, presidential appointments um, at the time of Ob during the Obama administration. So what that may mean uh, and likely will mean um, is that the filibuster rule uh, mm -hmm. will go away, in which case for the minority, um, the Senate will be no different than the House. Um, and, and that has been one of the most distinguishing factors of the two of the two houses is the Senate had this ability to allow room and voice for the minority to participate uh, in the processes of the Senate. If the filibuster goes away, that will, I mean, McConnell and Republicans might as well just, you know, just check in and check out because that's all it's going to be for them. Yeah. Then other things come into play, like expanding the size of the court. Um, if Donald Trump gets this nominee through uh, with a 6-3 conservative majority, look for an expansion to 11 or 15 uh, seats uh, by uh, Democrats um, at that time. And then other things like, you know, statehood for Puerto Rico uh, and the District of Columbia uh, move right up the line. So this will fundamentally change, Alex, a lot uh, for the United States Senate if this action happens um, between now and next January. Yeah. Um, Molly, we have all watched bitter confirmation battles unfold. You've done so very, very carefully. Each one with more intensity uh, for the justices, Neil Gorsuch, followed by Brett Kavanaugh. How do you envision a third confirmation fight under this president, especially if it comes before Election Day? I have to say, I heard one analyst say that it would make the angst around the Kavanaugh hearings pale by comparison. Oh, yeah, especially because this is going to come down to abortion. I, I think this is really a story of whether or not Roe gets overturned. And I, a lot of American women are very passionate about the rights over their own bodies. So I think this could get really, really ugly really fast. Hey, Michael, before we let you go, um, I just want to ask you on a personal note how you feel about this whole Supreme Court situation, because you are a Republican against Donald Trump. So g give me your sentiments both now and then long term. Look, I I've always believed, going back to the, uh, the, the, uh, the case of Mayor Garland, uh, that the established order of things is the established order of things for a reason. Not only does it uh, promote the comedy within the, uh, the Senate, in other words, the collegiality and the ability to work together, but it is a respect for the rules in the process. And Mitch McConnell, um, for political uh, reasons, um, violated that. Uh, Harry Reid, for political reasons, violated that. And so now we're on, on this downward spiral, Alex, that I think um, could be have detrimental uh, impacts um, in how we govern going forward, where, the, where it's almost a wild, wild west. Whoever's in charge gets to control the process, and I don't need to talk to the other side. So now and long term, we as Americans should be concerned about what these next 45 days and certainly the period between the election and the inauguration look like and how they play out. And we have to step in and have some control in that, um, because if we don't, what comes afterwards, starting January 21st, could be a royal mess for this country. And that's not good for either the, uh, the party and certainly not for the American people. I got to tell you, you said we should be concerned, Michael. We are concerned with uh, a big yeah. exclamation point. Michael, uh, well, thank we'll you for see. joining me. We'll yeah, see. We'll see. Molly John we'll Fast, see. you guys come see me again. I'll look forward to that.